This is the GIS News Hour for Thursday, May 16, 2013. I am Abigail McIntyre. In the headlines, fire scare at the ministerial complex. Work officially begin on the Mamakan Community Center and Beacon students ready for CPEA exams Friday. Details after the break. singled him out as the only world leader with a PhD in mathematics and statistics. But President Bush knows such level of success today calls for a level of sacrifice at this level. At this level. And even at this level, Math Month 2013, effective use of manipulatives in the teaching of mathematics. For success tomorrow, make the sacrifice today. Everybody riding on the mathematics train, the mathematics train. Public service transformation, that's the way to go. We need modernization for better service to you. It's not business as usual. Know that we can't afford. So come one and all. Everybody get on board. Please answer the call. Everybody get on board. Be for service for all. Everybody get on board. Workers at the ministerial complex in Tantine got a fire scare Thursday morning, which sent public officers hurriedly out of the building. A malfunction with an air-conditioned unit on the second floor, which houses the Ministry of Agriculture and Health, is said to be responsible for the incident. GIS News spoke with Information Minister Senator Winston Garway about the episode. Just about 8 o'clock this morning, there was a smell of burning rubber coming from the second floor precisely within the AC unit on the north end of the, that floor. Upon investigation, there was a, a hammering sound coming from within the AC unit. And what, was, um, what we realized, that sound, after subsiding, there was a smoke that came. Um, as a result of this, we took the precautionary measures and asked everyone to evacuate the building because we didn't know exactly what was really happening. Um, and I must indeed commend the staff for the promptness and the orderliness in getting out. Yes, it was smoke and it could have been fire and people got out. And um, we would have done the necessary by calling in the relevant authorities, the fire department, the special squad, and all of them came to do the, the check to ensure that um, that rubber burning was not anything that serious. Um, finally, when the, the servicemen for the AC unit came along with the, the, the electrical engineers, they were able to ascertain that um, bearing within that AC unit malfunctioned. And within that, that shaft, the, the rubber encasement deteriorated. So the smoke we had was as a result of that rubber with in the shaft started to melt. Um, they were able to at least shut it down and um, put all the, the measures in place to, to ensure that it wasn't something more serious. After the area was secured by the fire brigade, other air conditioning units on the various floors were inspected. After being outside for more for about two hours, workers were then given the all clear to return to their desks. Senator Garwin noted that the occurrence further underscored the need to have proper evacuation plans for the ministerial complex in the event of any eventualities. We also look at the 
the measures that was employed to get people out. Um, the fire drills and so forth, this is something that is ongoing because what we do realize, mind you, we are just about the hurricane season and it could be any, any disaster, any hazard and we must have a, a plan that is working and to ensure that people are safe and are protected. This morning was a good way to, to, to assess the level of preparedness that we have and what are the plan that is in place. Yes, we have seen some areas that need strengthening and we would certainly do that because um, the safety of the workers is paramount in this, in this dispensation. Information Minister Senator Winston Garway. Work has officially begun on the Mamakan Community Center. On Wednesday, a ceremony was held in the community of, in the community to mark the recommencement of work. The Mamakan Community Center project began in 2008 under the then NNP administration, but when tides turned at the 2008 general election, the government then failed to continue work on the building. Now, after five years, the new NNP administration resumed construction work on the facility. Despite the tough economic times, we see this as a priority, and that is why we are endeavoring to have this facility completed. Parliamentary Representative for St. Andrew Southeast, the Honorable Emmeline Pear. The project is now in its second phase, which will focus on the first floor. Gabriel Henry of the Ministry of Works outlined how the project will run. What we will be doing there, we will be finishing the first floor, the ground floor. That will be done at a later date. So we will finish the roof, the electrical work, the plumbing work, the plastering, the tiling, all the different things that will make the, the building suitable so that the community of Mama can, can use the building. Um, one of the things we'll also be setting up there in terms of managing this project and ensuring that it finishes on time, because we do not want to see the project just dragging on for the next four or five months. So we will, we will establish a program and we will set it up on the site and the contractor will have to work with that program because we want to finish this within the next four or five months maximum. So I want to say to the people of Mamakan, you can rest assured that within the next few months, you, the center will be available so that you all can use it. Please be mindful that, <clears throat> as the minister said earlier on, in this hard economic time, one must compliment the minister for ensuring that the project starts back today. Because we know, the, we know the economic situation in the country at this time, and it clearly indicates the minister's commitment to the people of Mamakan and the surrounding area. Community member Roy McMillan thanked the minister for her determination to see the project through and encouraged community members to do their part. As a villager, I'd like to give one advice. In this hard economic time, money is scarce, government declared that, and we all know that. We will be re-elected on the building as the previous workers used to be. And I'm asking us, as villagers, to pull our weights, change our attitude towards this, this second trip. Let's build our production and productivity. Give an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Because there are a lot of other villages that are suffering just like Mamakian. And if we pull our weights, they will benefit as a result of that. While at the ceremony, Mrs. Pear, who is also responsible for youth development, launched some other projects to be undertaken in her constituency. And I want to officially announce this morning the constituency inter-primary school literary competition, which I wish to officially launch this morning. This program would be for primary schools within our constituency and the schools would immediately begin to prepare for this competition, which would see students competing in areas such as spelling, reading, poetry, songwriting and singing, and other areas. I want to also announce that we will be giving attractive prizes both to the schools and to the students. So the top school will walk away with a computer, other prizes, and monetary gifts. The students would all win trophies in their categories and other special prizes 
that they too will walk away with. We view this as very important as we seek to motivate the students within our constituency. Let me also say that each of those schools will be announcing the student of the year at the end of the school year, which is very soon to end, and they will be receiving a special award inclusive of a trophy from the parliamentary representative. And that is all of the primary schools within the constituency. I wish to also officially announce today the start of the St. Andrews Southeast Backyard Gardening Competition. Forms will soon be available so that residents in the constituency can apply for this um, competition. She also spoke about a scholarship program that will cater to some of the most vulnerable in the area. Where each school will identify five of the most needy students. And those students, apart from the regular school books, uniform and transportation assistance, they will also be provided with breakfast and lunch. I also want to mention the launch of the fifth program, which is the reconstruction of the crochet basketball courts. We are endeavoring to fence the courts, erect poles, and to run a competition for basketballers within our constituency. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just informed you of five projects which we have officially launched this morning. But to say to you that in June, we will be holding another launching ceremony in another part of the constituency where we will be launching another five programs. Parliamentary Representative for St. Andrew's Southeast, the Honorable Emmeline Pear. The sixth graders at the Beacon Junior School were engaged in doing their last revision in preparation for Friday's Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment examinations. Beacon Junior is one of the schools that has been doing well in the common entrance examinations over the years and believes that this trend will continue with its replacement, the CPEA examination that was introduced by the Ministry of Education last year. Sixth grade teacher Karine Gittens speaks about getting the students prepared. She said a, a lot of emphasis was placed on math and the sciences. We spent a lot of time in the first two terms of in our projects, our portfolios, and all of the internal parts that have to go in. The later part of the term that we spend practicing for the final exam, which is mostly multiple choice. So we have to do a lot of quizzing, um, practice papers, and what are some of the areas that you really placed emphasis on? Well, for the last part of the latter part of this term, we place more emphasis on science, math, and language because these are the three areas that will be coming for the final exam. The first part will have four areas: math, language, science, and civic. But there is no civic part for the final exam. Sixth grade students from the various schools are expecting good performances and get placed in their secondary school of preference. At the Beacon Junior School, it seems like the students were very confident. I've been studying, I've been quizzing myself, I've been quizzed in class, and I've been doing pretty well. I think you'll do well tomorrow. Yes. What is your favorite subject? My favorite subject is math. Preparations have been really great. I've been doing a lot of studying. I've been working on all three of my areas. My favorite subject is math. Tell me, Yes, I'm okay with all the subject areas. I've been saying the topics that I had a bit of trouble with, and I got them. I accomplished my goals. Yes, I'm looking forward to CPE. Yeah, I hope I'll do well. Convent, St. George's. How has been preparations for the CPE exam been going for you? Well, it's been going very good. Well, I've been studying in the areas that I haven't been doing so well in, like some parts in grammar. But I'm pretty good in the math and science. Not any help from home? Yeah, sometimes my mother helps me.